Kia ora guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the final episode on the $100 Disco, getting it running. Um, this episode, it's a big one, uh, so stay tuned for heaps. Uh, a lot of transformation happens on the rig as we uh, prepare to get it ready for the uh, White Pro River run. Um, it comes down to the wire, I'll tell you that. Anyway, let's not muck around, let's get straight into the action. Alright guys, well as you can see, we've uh, done a lot of work since we last picked up the camera. Um, ran out of memory and then kind of just, we were in too much of a hustle to get it done to go and clear the memory card. So, um, as you can see we've got these um, these bars in, they're uh, fully welded out, so pretty pleased with how they've come out. It's looking really good and uh, for those of you who hadn't already worked it out, yes we're going coilovers in the back. We've got these old Amateur Extreme um, 14 inch travel coilovers, um, picked those up off one of the comp boys for a, a good deal so figured you know it'd be rude not to throw them in this thing. Um, so yeah we're trying to make them fit, they're absolutely massive, uh, there's been a lot of uh, thoughts been thrown around as to how we're going to do it but um, we've gone and put the, well Matt's gone and made up these awesome looking lower um, brackets um, which we'll trim down to make suit. Um, but yeah, we just tack those on the back of the axle, and uh, yeah, next job is, but, yeah, make them fit pretty much, so yeah, we'll get into it then. So it's after dinner now, we've got to have these coilovers mounted by the end of the night, because we've got to get this, uh, these shocks in so we can uh, figure out what springs we need to order, because it's obviously, you know, this time next week we should have finished the river run. Um, so yeah, we've got the uh, lower mounts tacked in. Uh, they had to come back out again and be modified. So yeah, Matt's been absolute trooper on the grinder. Um, so that's happening. Uh, we've got one shock fully compressed um, for setting um, compressed height. And then we've also got the fully extended one with the springs on it, um, which is what we'll test fit. Because we've only got two springs, but we need two per, two per shock. So that leaves us in a bit of a pickle. Um, but yeah. So what you can hopefully see down here behind me is Tim measuring the distance that we've slid the piston out when bending the first bend in our pipe. Uh, this is something we should have done last time in order to help get the second bend exactly the same amount of degrees. But uh, we're doing it this time and now that's something you know as well. It's another night, uh, Monday night, so we've got literally five days to get this thing done. Um, we spent last night uh, working on the rear coilover bar. Um, yeah, it got so dark we literally just couldn't even film anything. But uh, we've got the bar here and, well this is how it goes in. So basically it ties in on um, the bar there and the bar here, like so approximately and once that's there uh, we're then going to make some tabs to put the coilovers off the back of it um, we've got the uh, axle at full bump um, because the coil the coilovers are so long with so much travel we're um, you know allowing for heaps of extra up travel um, because yeah you know don't want to bot bottom out the coilovers and to be honest, like there's that much travel, we can we're going to be using limit straps anyway, so not using the full range, so that'll work good.
Right, coil over bar is in. Now to uh, weld it out fully and start making some uh, braces for it. Hello. Righto guys, so another day, uh, another day working on that thing behind me. Uh, while Tim's inside editing a video for you guys, I will uh, give you a quick update as to what I'm up to. So what I'm going to be doing today while Tim's editing, it's just going to be a couple of brackets that come off this pipe here. Uh, we're going to try and get it as close as possible for strength, but uh, obviously we're limited by the travel of the axle and how big the springs are. But I'll keep you updated as to how I go. Right, so what you just saw Tim doing was uh, tacking all of those plates that I've just made together uh, to allow us to put them in the pillar drill over there and get all the holes lined up in the same spot. So we did the same trick with the lower mounts, which you've probably already seen. I can't remember if we filmed that or not. I think so. We probably filmed it. <laughs> if not, you've seen it now. Uh, so yeah, we'll get to drilling those. Well, when you're not done, mate. We have got some brackets made. And uh, that, in the grand scheme of things, is roughly how our coilover is going to be sitting. Good morning guys, uh, another day obviously still working on that thing. Um, it is Thursday, the river run is this Sunday so not much longer to go. Uh, fortunately me and Matt both were able to get a day off work to uh, crank out some work on this. Um, Matt's got to duck out at about 3 o'clock to uh, go get a whole bunch of uh, random things sorted. So this morning we're going to get all the uh, fabrication and stuff that needs uh, two people for and then uh, he's going to go get some mechanical stuff sorted like drive shafts and that and I'm going to just start welding this thing out because there is so much stuff tacked together that needs a proper weld so that's the plan for, of the tack for the day so we'll, we'll get into it. Okay guys so we've got the uh, coil over top mounts on, uh, the bottoms are already tacked on so What's just happened, we were just lucky enough to have the courier come a day early, plus off some uh, new coilover springs. So we've got these for the uh, dual stage uh, coilovers. So what we're going to do is, wasn't planned, but we're going to uh, chuck them in the uh, coilovers and test ride height. Um, see if our absolute guess with the uh, coil springs is remotely close, because we didn't really have enough time to uh, you know, work everything out. Um, so we kind of just had to take an initial guess just so that we've got a uh, running truck for the river run. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to throw some big attacks on the uh, axle end and uh, we'll throw it all together and see if we got remotely close. This could be my final moments on earth. So, uh... While Tim's over there making some homemade missiles, I'll uh, stand nice and safely all the way back over here and use my zoom on my camera. He volunteered me for this job. Cheers mate, good on you. Such a giver. Right, there we are. So those are the uh, Amateur Extreme 14 inch uh, travel coilovers. They're two and a half inch body, so Big shocks, um, way too big for that realistically, but uh, they're cool and they were cheap, so that's uh, why we went with them. Anyway, about to throw them under. Alright guys, as you can see, the uh, coilovers are in, we're about to drop it down. Uh, we've just pulled the bump, well, we're about to pull the uh, bump stop spaces out so that uh, we can see it sitting under its uh, at ride height for its first time. So we'll give this a go and uh, see if I got remotely close with my uh, guess of. Uh, Spring lengths and spring rates, so here goes. I just hope it doesn't sit too low. Ooh, not too bad. 
a little bit low, but that that can be uh, adjusted all on this. We've got four inches of adjustment here. So that, that is a win. Right, now that we've tested it and found out that my guesses were not too far off at all, um, next job is to um, pull it all back out and uh, make some rear bump stop mounts for the axle end. Um, obviously right now there's just a truss so we've got some box section which we're just going to slap on top of it so that should be a reasonably nice and quick job. <laughs> Righty, so we have gone and got the everything done for the back end um, suspension. So, the final thing was the bump stop pads, which are there. So now we've just got to, you know, slowly throughout the day, I just need to, you know, do five minutes welding, you know, in a couple spots here, there and everywhere over that, so we don't warp the axle with too much heat, but that just needs welding out and it's ready to go back under. Um, we've still got a few hours before Matt's got to disappear and get all our drive stuff sorted as well. So, as you can see, the truck's looking pretty naked under there. And uh, Matt is just starting on uh, pulling the front all apart because that is it's pretty much all good as well other than we've got A, no steering um, and B, no bump stop mounts. Or bump stops for that matter because I went and cut up the front ones thinking they were the rears. And now we've got nothing to put in the front. But that's what we're working on is, uh, yeah, bump stops and, yeah, I'll do steering at some other stage. <laughs> yeah. Right, so after a lot of measuring and messing about, decided there just physically isn't room for a bump stop um, that we've got lying around currently. So what we're going to do is, uh, at some stage I'm going to rob a factory length bump stop out of my sister's truck over there um, for, the drive, uh, for the driver's side, because uh, that's where the pumpkin is, basically the pumpkin's um, more offset than a sap axle, and it's, uh, yeah, rather than the bump stop pad hitting uh, the bump stop and the, just the dip head is. So we'll lose a bit of travel for the uh, river run but it'll be fine and then for the passenger side we'll just use the extended bump stop that we took out um, and that should even it out enough to get us through the river run because uh, the plan is to go to hydro bump stops anyway which we'll be you know making brackets for probably back here and little contact on that old shock mount so don't really want to get too involved with uh, making bump stops, so we'll just go with that. It won't be ideal, but it'll get us through the river run just fine. Righto guys, as you can see, uh, front axle is out. Um, took a wee bit longer than intended, but these things do. Uh, if we come out here, we will see that Tim has been throwing some more welds on this axle. Saturday morning and this time tomorrow morning we've got to be on the road to the Wiper River Run. So last minute as always, it's got no axles under it, no drive and yeah, it's looking uh, looking pretty not running at this stage so we've got to throw it all back together so uh, stay tuned as we um, assemble it all. Righto guys, so what you can see Tim doing there is just uh, removing one of the studs on the bottom of the dip. Uh, when we took it to Tom's off-road to get shaved, it obviously uh, he took it flat across the bottom which removed the drain bung for the dip. So we're just replacing one of the studs with a bolt so that we can uh, drain the oil out when we need to. 
What are you doing there, Tim? Got a bit of petrol. We're just cleaning out all the uh, all the goo in the inside of the axle tubes and all that from uh, welding and everything. It's uh, don't really want it going through the bearings, so we'll get as much of it out as possible. Alright guys, well as you see, we've got the uh, axle under, it was a bit of a struggle so it didn't really bother filming it, but now we've just got to put the lower links in and coilovers in and we can really start uh, getting somewhere with this uh, rear end assembly. Just some last minute adjustments, as you can see coilovers are in, slightly not such good news, unfortunately one of the misalignment spaces, oh Matt's got them here, as you can see someone's decided to run a drill through if it'll focus for you so yeah this one obviously is real sloppy and that's the right size so um we're just figuring out what to do likely going to have to tear around to a mate with a, a lathe who's going to spin us up a bush to bush it down to the right size uh, so for the meantime we've just got it sitting in on just a random bolt um but yeah we're about to uh jack it up put the uh, tires on and the uh, rear should be pretty much together we've just got to put the drive shaft in Right, so uh, coilovers are in. Quick thank you to Nathan over at uh, Kaipoi Repowers. Uh, done us a huge favour and regassed the shock super last minute, so big thank you to him. Um, anyway, the next thing we've got is the uh, drive shaft to chuck in there. Um, obviously, we've stretched the wheelbase. Need to actually measure up what it is, but we've stretched the wheelbase, so the uh, um, drive shaft obviously was too short. Also, having to go to a Nissan flange, so. Big thanks to Andy, um, he did us a huge solid and whipped up a beautiful wee spacer on his uh, lathe and uh, he's also gone and uh, re-drilled our flanges on the diffs uh, to Land Rover pattern down there. So the next thing I'm going to do is go throw the uh, drive shafts in. <sighs> right, so it's uh, about 2.30 right now. Um, Dad has pulled the swivel housing apart so that we can put the uh, CVs in and um, install the front diff. I am just about to tackle the uh, drilling out the drive shaft um, holes for the uh, sp so that it goes through the spacer because the spacer's got bigger holes. Um, the back's all back together. Matt just got back from uh, having uh, Rick and Brian. They did us a mega solid and. Um, machined up a bush for the misalignment spacer for this side so we're back in the game with that I've just pulled the brake lines off the uh, old Land Rover axle because we've got the same size same fittings we're just gonna swap those straight over onto this axle uh, the calipers are currently off so that's gonna go on so it's all all coming together slowly but surely uh, yeah <laughs> Right. Righto guys, so uh, what's happening there is unfortunately the holes on the spacer uh, didn't quite line up with the holes on our drive flange on the diff. So Tim's just quickly run the drill through them as best he can to uh, smooth the joint out and uh, we'll be able to get the bolts in. Alright guys, well that's the uh, front diff going in. I forgot to mention to you guys what happened because it was uh, getting 4.6 diffs. Um, there was a bit of a hiccup with um, the 4.6 ring and pinion that we got. Turns out that it was a 4.1. Um, bit of a just a bit of a whoopsie from the uh, manufacturer over in China. Popped the wrong wrong thing in the wrong box, and there wasn't time to fix it. So we've got a couple of 4.1s courtesy of Rick, and uh, it's got a welded rear center in it, and um, uh, that Tirano diff you saw um, ages ago, I think episode one. Um, that Tirano LSD is in the center there, so. Matt is about to sling that in, so good luck to him because it's a heavy, heavy thing. <laughs> right guys, so don't know how well you can hear me over the wind, but uh, we're just getting a couple of brace bars welded in on our rear chassis, just uh, bracing it back out to the sides, so that we are able to get rid of that one.
for guys well it's about 11 30 at night um don't even remember the last time i had the camera up anyway we've uh, got the truck coming together pretty pretty well now uh still got a bit to do but yeah it's gonna be a late one anyway we've just uh plumbed the fuel tank in we've just got the original tank just in here sitting on a random uh, piece of wood um it's just to get us through the truck really uh it's all it's got to do um so we just want to go off roading tomorrow <laughs> Anyway, we're going to uh, see if we can get this thing to fire up. Obviously, the fuel lines and all that are empty of fuel, so I've primed it, well, ran the pump multiple times, and I guess we'll just see how long it takes to uh, fire up. I will now go and cry myself to sleep because that starts better than my daily driver does. <laughs> First try, that's awesome. There's a win. Ah, uh, why is my surf so garbage? <laughs> Righto guys, so it is uh, currently 1.30 in the morning, uh, the day of the White River Run, as you've clearly figured out by now. Uh, our list is... Shorter. Yep, getting shorter, as Tim says. Tim is currently getting that, uh, getting that drive shaft sorted. I'm about to throw the front bar on, and we might be really cheeky and go out and get some food, because we're getting kind of hungry and things aren't going our way. So why not get Maccas? <laughs> Don't you agree, Mr. Timothy? Oh, I'm so ready for some food. It's 20 past 2 in the morning and we're having breakfast? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Alrighty guys, well, 5.30 in the morning, bar out, I'm absolutely shattered. Matt headed home a few hours ago, um, he's trailering the truck out, so he needs some sleep. I'll probably sleep in the car on the way. Four hours till the event starts, and we've got to be there early to film as well, so absolute, absolute doozy. We've just had a string of bad luck with this thing, the uh, little pump to pump the uh, oil into the... Uh, Diff um, went and uh, decided it didn't want to work anymore and has caused quite the explosion all over the floor, like everywhere. And um, so, yeah, the whole five litres of uh, diff oil that's gone in the front axle I have pumped in by hand using a uh, cut down Powerade bottle. So, I just turned into the oil man, but <laughs> far out. It's, um, it's nearly done. I've just got a couple of bolts to check tighten. And um, throw the guards on, throw the bu bumper on, yeah we might fire it up and take it for a quick sneaky test drive. Alright guys, just gone 6am, time to take the uh, thing for a test drive. I think it's all pretty much together, there's a few loose bolts but it'll be fine. And it'd be rude not to. Oh, check out those halos. <laughs> If you haven't seen the video where we install these, uh, make sure you uh, check them out. I'll uh, pop them in uh, one of these corners for you. Those halos are cool. Anyway, let's uh, take this thing for a test drive. guys well you probably can't even see me but first drive it's going oh I don't know eh? I don't know whether we'll end up taking it because it's only two-wheel drive we'll see if we can work it out but it's going it goes I'm so happy right guys well it's now about uh, 8 30 I figured better give you a quick explanation oh you the explanation um, so we did absolutely everything we could do to get that thing uh, there running for you um, for the river run but it just unfortunately is not going to happen um, 
Obviously, we've got to be on the road. Well, we're actually already running late. We need to be on the road. There's just no time to investigate into the hubs as to why they're not engaging. Um, I believe it is the hubs that's uh, not allowing for full drive because we're definitely getting drive through the diffs and everything. Um, so, yeah. So, 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 so close to making it, but didn't quite. It's all good. These things happen. Um, fortunately, you know, I'm lucky enough to have Lando as well, so we'll take Lando, but yeah. There's that combined with a couple of other things, like other, if it was only the four-wheel drive, then yeah, I'd probably just send it in two-wheel drive, but um, yeah, unfortunately, them's the brakes, so that's, um, that's what's going on. Well, as you can see, by the end of that, I was barely picking up the camera. We were absolutely cranking to try to get that thing ready for the river run. And uh, it just wasn't meant to be. Um, came so, so, so close. I honestly, like it was a week ago, but I can't remember what I explained to you, but uh, the, uh, I believe it's one of the hubs was not engaging properly. Um, one of the hubs. And um, yeah, like we gave it everything we had, but yeah, without the hubs engaging, only two wheel drive. I mean, we'd have made it just fine in two wheel drive. Um, However, it was a mixture of a whole bunch of other things. If it was only two-wheel drive, we'd have probably still gone. And if it was four-wheel drive and the other things um, playing up, we'd have still probably gone. But it was just the whole combination of everything. Um, we only had this little um, bung here to hold the fuel on and the fuel in, and it's loose as. Um, we didn't have any braces on the coilovers yet. Um, obviously, you really want those to be all nice and braced up. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of little things. Um, the coilovers are super, super firm. Um, obviously, they're going to need tuning because they're off a different vehicle. Um, but yeah, they're super firm. Um, so what we're going to be doing with those is getting them retuned. We've got some cool ideas for that. Um, and also, yeah, obviously, there's a lot more weight to still go in. It's getting a proper fuel cell. We're doing the big trophy truck style. Spare hanging out the back, like those uh, Bomber um, Ultra 4 buggies, just to try to get some weight and some leverage over the back. But uh, yeah, we'll talk more about that in a second, but right now I might just grab the truck out, I'll pull it out into the yard, so you can actually see it, because I realised, I mean, personally, I've barely even seen it in full, it's been stuck in a shed, and uh, you guys certainly haven't, so I'll haul it out and you can have a look.
Right guys, well that wraps up building the $100 Disco. Obviously it's running now, so from here it's going to probably be a lot slower build. There will definitely be more build videos coming because it's got a lot to do, lots of tuning, lots more cage work. And uh, yeah, it's nowhere close to done and I'm already thinking about version 3, but uh, we won't go there yet. From here the uh, videos are going to slow down on this. Uh, we'll hopefully get back into doing some actual off-roading, some wheeling, all the good action to come. Because uh, yeah, it's been a while since we've had a proper adventure. It's just all been uh, spent in the shed. So this thing's still got heaps to go. Um, you will see it on the channel, but there will be a, probably a break for about a month um, while we just catch up on everything else and maybe start get a bit of uh, videos in the uh, in the back pocket. Anyway, a few of the people I'd love to thank. Um, Firstly, massive thank you to uh, Brian and Rick and um, Andy for all the help they put in behind the scenes doing lathe work and work getting the uh, diffs all sorted. If it weren't for them, yeah, there just wouldn't have been a truck. Yeah, huge thanks to Dad, huge, huge thanks to Dad for all the, uh, you know, time he's let us uh, clog up his workshop because obviously I've not got a place of my own. So, um, yeah, we've been uh, taking over his tools, taking over his shed and uh, yeah, basically uh, causing mayhem, so huge thanks to Dad for letting me do that, and uh, yeah, that's certainly appreciated. And lastly, huge thank you to Matt. Um, obviously without him it just wouldn't have happened, like, just the hours put in grinding, cutting, just making little things here and there, just running around sorting things out, like, he was off sorting random, like, buying pipe and tube and this and that while I was busy working, like, just would not have happened without him so huge thanks to Matt I mean yeah I don't know how I'll ever repay him I guess we'll just have to build him a truck now so um, but nah and thank you guys all for watching like it's been a really cool build I've had so much support from you guys lots of messages on Instagram Facebook and everyone in the comments you know it's just been awesome um, definitely keeps you going because this has been a not an easy build so outside of my uh, comfort zone wish that would shut up um, yeah, way outside of my comfort zone of where, you know, my skill set was when we started and uh, I mean it proves you don't have to have lots of fancy tools to build a cool truck like, you know, just an angle grinder, a welder and a drill, that's pretty much it on a pipe, pipe bender but it's nothing particularly fancy, just lots of hours and, you know, practice. So I encourage you guys all to get out in the shed, build what you've been wanting to build, just crack into it, you honestly can't go wrong. And uh, thank you all again for watching and we will catch you all in the next one. Cheers for watching. We'll see you then.